Hello and welcome back to Man Behind the Stats. I'm Statman Cam and in this video we'll be looking at United's reported target, Gabriel. So, Gabriel is Brazilian and he plays for Lille in the French League. He plays in central defence and the key part here is that he's left-footed. This rumour all started after the Bournemouth game, where Solskjaer was seen saying to Nathan Ake at full time that you need a left-footed centre-back in your team. So, given Gabriel's age and potential, and the fact that given the departure of Marcus Rojo is almost certain to happen, Gabriel fills an obvious gap in United's squad. So this transfer is very much possible. First of all, let's take a look at what Gabriel could bring to Manchester United. So this example is from the Southampton game, where Southampton were relentlessly pressing Manchester United in our own half. So here you've got Luke Shaw on the ball, he passes it back to Harry Maguire. And look at Harry Maguire's body position, he's facing outwards towards the touchline initially. That's good, but if you look at his body position now as he's receiving the ball, you can see he's facing up the pitch. When you're being pressed like this, you need your centre-back to either take one touch out wide and feed that ball into Matic and play through the press, or he's got to take responsibility and play that ball over the press. A direct long ball which would take out seven Southampton players that you can see in that picture. Instead though, you can see as Maguire receives that ball, under pressure, he wants to get it onto his strong foot and therefore he opens up his body, facing inwards. And now, all of a sudden, rather than being able to either play through the press by giving it to Matic, or playing a long ball over the top and around the press, he has to now go back to David De Gea. Clearly, in that situation, a left-footed player would be more easily able to take that touch and play that ball to Matic, or, in Gabriel's case, use his very good long passing and play a good ball over the top to Rashford or Martial. To emphasise that point, let's see what happens when that ball gets transferred from Maguire all the way out the other side to Victor Lindelof. So look at where Maguire is facing now. You can see he's opened up his body and there's only one way that pass can possibly go. Moving on, as that ball comes out to Lindelof, you can see the first line of Southampton's press there. So Lindelof has two options. He can either be aggressive and try and break that line by giving that ball to Pogba, but that's very risky. So instead, he decides to let the ball run beyond him and go out wide. Now, when Lindelof gets his first touch on the ball, you can see he's much wider. Look at his body position again. He's pointing out towards the touchline and he's bought himself a bit of space. He can now get his head up, take another touch and look to play a long ball, but accurately into the path of Marcus Rashford. On this occasion, the defender just about gets there ahead of him. But the important thing is you're turning the defence and you're not getting caught out by the press. This is where Gabriel would massively help Manchester United. Now the pictures don't really do it justice here, and I'm working on getting clips available, but for Gabriel here, it shows his biggest strength. Switching the ball and making long raking passes out to the opposite winger. Now, this brings me on to my next point, the tactical flexibility Gabriel would offer Manchester United. Moving forward next season, Playing that 3-5-2 with Gabriel and Lindelof either side of Harry Maguire will be a massive asset for United in terms of build-up play. Both Lindelof and Gabriel are very proficient and very good at playing long balls over the defence, accurately, and into the path of forwards. Harry Maguire, who will be in the centre of that defence, is exceptional and one of the best in the world at carrying the ball forwards. So it would allow all three of those to utilise their best strengths in build-up play. Also, when playing a 4-2-3-1 system, it would allow a more conventional midfield role for Nemanja Matic. Gabriel would likely play alongside one of either Harry Maguire or Victor Lindelof, depending on the competition and the circumstances. And so this would allow a much more conventional defensive midfield role for Nemanja Matic. It's nothing strange seeing defensive midfielders drop into the back line, but what is strange is Matic at United having to go to the left of the back three, because we need that left footer to help with build up and progressing the ball. Having a left footed centre back who's able to split wide would allow Maguire and Gabriel, or Lindelof and Gabriel, to both split very wide with a defensive midfielder simply slotting in into the middle as is normally expected of that role. Looking at how United build up in general, they use a 3 3 1 3 shape, as you can see now. Matic having to drop in on the left of that back three has caused some confusion because sometimes he doesn't know whether he should be in the centre or whether he should be out wide on the left to help with build-up play. And for a defensive midfielder, you want them to be in the centre of the park so that as soon as United lose the ball, 
He can step up. The fullback can push in, tuck in, pushing the centre backs towards the centre of the pitch, and you've got a secure defence. If your defensive midfielder is out wide left, it leaves you a little bit more exposed because they're not in the right place where you want them to be to cut out attacks. So, now we've spoken about Gabriel's ball progression qualities, let's take a look at his defensive game. So, now looking at this graph, you can see Gabriel's aerial dual win percentage is a lot better than Lindelof. He's a lot further to the right than Lindelof is, but he's also a lot higher up on that graph. He gets dribbled past a lot more. So, whilst Gabriel will be an improvement on Lindelof in the air, which is something sometimes United have struggled with, Against dribblers, Lindelof is one of the best out there, and so Gabriel wouldn't be an improvement in that respect. This, for me, is my main concern with Gabriel. Analysing his defensive game, it seems to me as though sometimes he's not a dominant defender. He doesn't always seem to control the situation in the way that you'd expect. Now, this is something that comes with experience, it comes with maturity, it comes with having played lots of games. But, for me, it shows that Gabriel is not yet the finished article. He's not yet the perfect defender. If we now take a look at an example, you'll see what I mean. So this is taken from Lille's defeat to Ajax in the Champions League. You can see clearly that Ajax player's on the ball out wide, and he's got that on his left foot. He's looking to cut back inside. So I've circled Gabriel in this example. Watch his movement now as we roll on the footage. So he correctly recognises he needs to get out and close down that danger. But as we stop here, you can see he stops moving. He stays planted there, telling the forward, you've got to get round me. Clearly, he's worried about the midfield runner behind him that I've circled there. Gabriel's first priority in that situation has to be to stop that winger cutting on his left foot where he's most dangerous. He has to show him down the line. But instead, he stops where he is in place. He's not blocking that pass to the midfield runner. He's not stopping a ball being slipped into Ajax's number 10. And he's not stopping the winger from cutting in. Moving on the footage again, you can see he stays where he is and Ziyech slides that ball in for Tadic. And in the final frame you can see Tadic gets a good goal scoring opportunity. He's in behind that defence through one on one against the goalkeeper. This is a scenario that crops up in most of the games I've seen Gabriel in. I've watched a lot of his footage now and it seems that this happens far too much. He often makes a decision very late and relies on his physicality to get him out of trouble. He needs to develop his mental side of the game. He needs to anticipate where the danger is coming from and try and shut off the most promising route to goal at every opportunity. That, for me, is how he can become a truly top-class defender. Now, in most situations, his physicality will get him out of the problems. But, up against the best dribblers, imagine he's doing that against Riyad Mahrez next season, or even Ziyech when he's playing for Chelsea. United are going to have a problem. So, for me, the coaching staff have to work on that for Gabriel next season. But if he can sort that out, he can become a top-class defender for Manchester United. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the new graphics style, please do let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not subscribed, get yourself subscribed and share the channel so we can keep growing and keep going for that 1,000 subs.